remember, of course, elementary school productions in which I was always trying out for parts. I never really studied art in school, but my mother uh, was an artist. My mom told, told me I was very good at drawing images. My mother was a pianist and desperately wanted her son to be one. Uh, he was not. And the Washington Opera Society uh, needed some young boys who, were, who would play the role of street urchins in the opera Carmen. So some of my friends and I got, uh, got involved with that. We got to miss school in the afternoon for uh, the practices, which of course was, was great. And then once the show got going, it was really something, just the, the crowds, the lights, the costumes. I um, took voice lessons, which was very important to me, and helped me position myself uh, as a singer and spent a great deal of my time singing, and that gave me a lot of confidence. Oh, well, I, you know, I played in the band, uh, you know, I was in the school play. We went over to uh, Reynolds Coliseum to see the North Carolina Symphony, and I was very impacted by that and wanted to go back and play the cello. So we were in second grade, and I was, I guess, seven years old at the time. We took this big field trip to the Tryon Palace in New Bern, and I remember being so impressed by that experience and all the things that were inside that the palace. I started as an intermediate photographer. I played the violin. I can play the cymbals. One of the first things I remember was having to stand in front of an auditorium full of parents and having to uh, dance, and I was petrified. So I played for five years as, as I like to say, first chair tuba, because you only have one chair, but I was it. I, I was first chair too. One night we got to um, got to stay when there were some special guests, so we stayed to see the whole show, and the guests came out backstage uh, after that, and it was uh, Prime Minister Nehru from India, and then Jackie Kennedy, the First Lady. So it was, it was really great. It teaches a lesson, for example, you're part of a band or an orchestra and you can't just do what you want to do, you've got to work to stay at the same uh, tempo with the conductor. And, and that, that gives you a lesson of self-discipline. Music and uh, difficult pieces, pieces that I wanted to play, the practice that was required in that, uh, pursuing that goal, something that's very transferable to the workplace. Organization and precision are critical to your long-term success, but hard work pays huge dividends, and there's no one who works harder than an artist. Spend all you have for loveliness, buy it, and never count the cost. And for a breath of ecstasy, give all you have been, for it could be. In the 11th grade, I won an oratorical contest uh, a teacher who was an English teacher that really worked hard to help me develop my speaking abilities. That gave me a great deal of confidence. Also for young people, they really give them a, you know, a sense of creativity, of possibility, and also give them a sense of confidence in themselves. When you go out on stage and, and give a line in a play or sing a song, it really is a different experience from what you do in the classroom most days. But we also had to be in a lot of plays. <laughs> but those plays were, you know, were definitely uh, they were. key. And I, I hate to do them, but they, they really gave us a, right. a good foundation because you had the uh, memory skills, you had yeah. oratorical skills involved, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a lot dealing with people, social environment. I think it helped us greatly in our later endeavors in life. All the world's a stage, as we all know. And in what I do now in lawmaking, it is, it is like being on stage sometimes. It is performing. And I think that I'm a better leader uh, as a result of the greater understanding that has come to me through reading, through viewing visual pieces of art. When I first arrived in North Carolina, I had the opportunity to work with a growing Latino organization. And we started working on an effort called La Fiesta del Pueblo, which was a festival. And I think that effort was an opportunity for us as new people to the state to share our culture with established um, North Carolinians. But I also remember how much fun it was because it was another thing uh, that I could get into and be with other students, meet other people because a lot of my associates were in athletics and the arts just gave me another outlet to make friends, uh, be creative, play.
scientists are called not just to understand the world and describe it, but to use that knowledge to help society. And when we do that, we need to understand what humans need. The arts help us understand things like emotion and beauty. The arts have an ability, I think, um, to transcend all other forms of communications between human beings who are otherwise different. And it creates a common language, a common bond. And I think nothing is able to do that as well as the arts. Imagination is more important than knowledge. I really got into photography, and we always had a dark room. And I developed an eye. But then we put a lot of stuff away because I had to go to medical school, new residency, and there's no time. Now we're having imaging with all the pixels and all the stuff. It's coming together with the robotic stuff that I'm doing inside the heart. Well, in fact, I'm working on things called heart art. Basically, if I'm operating on a mitral valve, which is made up of four or five complex structures, it's not just a quantitative cut, and so it's, there is some creativity. Now, if you can photograph these structures and understand these structures, colors, shades, I think you do much better than just being on the technical side, you know, the cut and so. The really creative surgeons that I know, they take that creative component and apply it to their specialty. They dance through the maneuvers inside the heart with ease. I heard from a teacher and she had a child that was threatening to drop out. And this teacher said to him one day, um, tell me what it is that you really love to do. What do you love to do? If you could do anything you want to do, what is it that makes you happy, makes you feel good, makes you produce? And he said, I love to sing. She asked him to give her one more day, and he did. And he came to school the next day and sang the morning announcements, which she had worked out with the principal. And he came back every day and sang the morning announcements. He stayed in school. To think wider thoughts, to think broader thoughts, sometimes to think beautiful thoughts, that's really important. And uh, if you don't have, if you don't have that part of your education, if you don't have that part of your soul, uh, you'll be a much poorer person. Math is the same everywhere. Two and two will always be four. But art lets your mind expand, I think. I believe that people who appreciate the arts at the end of the day make better citizens. They're more thoughtful. And they think about other people a great deal. And we need that if this state is going to continue to be a great state. I think we have a responsibility as adults in our society to make sure that all of our children are as well-rounded as they can be. That when you leave out that component, arts education component of it, then they're not where they need to be. I think if we had people coming to college who were extremely good at formulas and had a very good empirical knowledge of science, but they didn't know anything about emotion and, and, and human behavior and, and aesthetics, they would not be equipped to make the kind of advances that we need to solve the problems that we face in society. We need to be thinking about not how do we just reach the basic level in reading and math and science, but how do we make our people the most creative in the world here in North Carolina. I want this to be the most creative state of all the states in this country. And if we can do that, we will have the good jobs. You don't need to worry about that. They'll come to North Carolina. They will discover and invent in North Carolina. We'll come up with the new products and services, and we will lead the world. The arts are absolutely essential to that kind of future. You got it. Thank <laughs> you.
Thank you. 